live from Palo Alto, it's theCUBE. Covering Women Transforming Technology 2017. Brought to you by VMware. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're wrapping up a full day here at the VMware headquarters. I always want to say VMworld and not VMware. Uh, for the Women Transforming Technology Conference, been a fantastic day. Um, kicked off by Kara Swisher, wrapped up by Gloria Steinman, and a whole lot of interesting uh, sessions and topics in between. And really happy to have Rebecca Knight hosting all day. Thank you, for, Rebecca, for carrying it's the freight. It's been great, it's been a lot of fun. So I want to kind of turn the table. You've been doing all the interviews all day, and, 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 and interview you kind of, you know, you live in Boston, so you're not out here all the time. Kind of what is your perspective? A lot of conversation of kind of the Silicon Valley bubble and the Silicon Valley point of view, but it, it doesn't necessarily represent every place. It's a unique little spot on the world. So what's been your take on that piece of the, of the interviews today? I think that, that that is exactly what I've been thinking about. As an East Coaster, I mean, I, I live in Boston. I don't, I don't live in Nowheresville. I mean, but it, it, it's also a center of innovation and technological right. change, particularly Cambridge. Um, but there is this real special magic about Silicon Valley, and yet Silicon Valley also believes, it drinks its own Kool-Aid, and so has, it has its own uh, feeling of specialness too. So, so it, it's, it's interesting to be here and, and watch it all happen. Right. Now, other areas that you cover when you're not hosting theCUBE is management and leadership. And obviously, Boston is a hotbed of, of, of academe. I think what Harvard was, I think, the first college it was set up indeed, in the United indeed. States. So when you look at some of the issues, there's a, hot, a lot of topic uh, today on, on Uber, what's going on at Uber and, and some of the kind of overt sexism, if you will. When you look at the kind of leadership and, the, and the, the study of leadership and management, what are some of the things that you're seeing that are kind of new and innovative? You would think it's 2017 for God's sake. You'd think we'd be past some of these sophomoric issues, but we're not, and not by a long shot. It is very depressing, I'm going to be honest. Um, and I think particularly with leadership right now, I write a column for Harvard Business Review, um, and, and Harvard Business School is, is, is teaching the, the next generation how to be leaders, how to be responsible, and be the next captains of industry. Um, and yet, in Washington, we have this real example of how not to do it, in the sense of to not listen to experts, uh, not, li not take other people's perspectives, not, um, not be willing to collaborate and, and, and listen, really. Right, right, but, uh, but by the same token, I mean, one of Kara's themes was, you know, many of the great entrepreneurs that are driving innovation, and we hear it from, jo you know, stories of jobs all the time, they don't collaborate, mm -hmm. and they don't, they don't kind of toe the line, and they do break glass and, and, and break barriers, because they think differently, not to steal directly from that line. Yeah. But yeah. so it's, it's an interesting kind of juxtaposition of, you know, maintaining individuality, right. yet you also have to, you know, you have to operate in the world in which we live. Yes, and I think that that, th exactly, yes. Th those are very successful people tend to, um, to have that kind of driving personality. And yet, there, Kara, another part of Kara's speech was talking about the virtues of graciousness. Right, right. And, and, and how that really can also be a powerful part of leadership. Right. So as, as the, the study of management evolves, kind of how do you see that changing over time? You, you've been at it for a while. I mean, is it kind of more of the same? Is it fundamentally different what they're teaching in schools or as we study leadership? I, I'm always struck by, you know, we don't spend more time kind of studying you know, the Marines of Paris Island. I mean, they, they teach young kids that are, you know, 18 years old, 19 years old to turn into 23 year old leaders that are, you know, sending people to their deaths for the, for the cause of the, of the greater good that their, you know, objectives are trying to achieve. It's fascinating to me that, you know, we don't draw kind of more leadership studies from a broader range of, of perspectives, or am I just missing the No, boat? and I think you're absolutely right. And in, in talking about the military and talking about wartime, I mean, those are high pressurized situations where it's not just, oh, we're not going to make our numbers this quarter. It's right. my right. my platoon is going, I'm sending them into their death if right. this doesn't work out the way I like I've strategized. So no, I think that they're I think that um, I think that increasingly business schools are trying to take lessons from other parts of um, the military, for example, and also using 
uh, philosophy and art. Design thinking is another hot thing at business schools right, right now. Right. Trying to take other disciplines and finding the best bits and what they can apply in terms of how you run your business. It's interesting, the whole design thinking, because that's a that's getting a rebirth at Stanford. At Stanford, exactly, too, the right? D school, and yeah. It's, it's funny, it's we interviewed uh, Dan Gordon from Gordon Beers Brewery, who was introducing a new apple, um, a malted apple beverage, and he had this gal that worked at, or was from Stanford, played softball at Stanford, and they were doing this design thinking, and they just had a white label. And apparently you just go out and you go meet people and you show right. them the white label and you see the, how, how the whole thing shapes out. So there does continue to be this kind of evolution. Mm -hmm. No, it's absolutely true. So biggest surprises of the day. Biggest surprises of the day. I mean, I just, I first of all just want to congratulate VMware of choosing Gloria Steinem to be the keynote close. I, like I said, I think that that was just such a bold choice, an unexpected choice. Yes, it's a women's conference, but she is a, she's a real feminist icon, so I think it was, I just, I'm so proud <laughs> oh, <laughs> to good. be here and, 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 and listen to Gloria. And how about some of your favorite moments from a few of the interviews? Oh, so many great interviews. Um, Yan Bin Lee, uh, really an energetic presence, um, yes. and she just had a lot of interesting things to say um, about, about mixing, uh, sort of her her personality, her, her her role as a mother, and her role as a leader and um, technologist. I right. thought that was great. Uh, I loved listening to Nicola Eichert talk about how she uses design thinking uh, to devise a sustainability strategy uh, here at VMware. And Lily Chang talking about her childhood in Taiwan, uh, the daughter of a mother who who had to fight for everything, including an education for Lily, and now what she what she does here um, in the office of the CTO at VMware. So, so many great women. Yeah, it's, you know, that's really my favorite part of the Cube is we get to talk to so many people that just, for whatever reason, there just isn't necessarily a format for them to, to, to sit down to tell and their really story. tell their story. Yeah. And they're all terrific stories. Yeah. Well, Rebecca, I want to thank you again for uh, for making the big trip it west. It was great. It was great. And, I love uh, it. And we I look love forward to uh, many more many more events with you as yes. we uh, get deeper into 2017 mm -hmm. conference season, which is going to be crazy, by the way. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks again, thank Rebecca. Thank you. She's Rebecca Knight. I'm Jeff Rick. You're watching theCUBE from VMware headquarters at the Women Transforming Technology Conference. Thanks for watching.